Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we'll be exploring interior renders using the 5 and Revit. Uh, this is the result we hope to achieve at the end of the renders. Sit back, relax, and enjoy, and let's get into it. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! So I've modeled the view I want to create in Revit. I'm going to share a link where you can look at how I created this model. Right? So. Once your model is set and by it like mine is, I've caught a 3D view of it. Uh, I can now go ahead, link it up to D5. So you can download a D5 render plugin like I've done here from their website. And from within Revit, you can start D5 by clicking Start D5. And then it, D5 is already open like in my case. It will ask me to create a new project or to just select a file to associate it. So I'll quickly OK to create a new project. Once I do that, the file is going to open up and then import my scene into the file. And this is exactly what it has just done. So it's very seamless import. And why this is good is because um, as you work in as you work in Revit, you can easily edit in the file, and you don't need to export or import or stuff like that. You don't need any of those things. So that's how it works. So if I go back to my Revit, uh, any changes I make here will seamlessly get to the file. So without much ado, let's start our tutorial. So in this tutorial, I will take it step by step. The first thing we want to do is to set up our camera view. So for us to do that, um, I'll click on this camera icon and then proceed to start working. So the first thing we want to do is to set up the same properly and uh, there are two icons here camera and display you can use so if you click on camera you can set up the angle of view the focal length and then uh, click and a lot of things here so i'm going to start with two point perspective by clicking this icon to make my view straight and just in two point perspective which is very good for interiors the next thing i want to do is to set my focal length for interiors i always like to keep it between 20, 25, you know, especially for tight spaces, you need the wide angles. I'm just, 18 is a little bit on the high side. So I'm going to try, let's say 22 and click OK. So um, this 22, the next thing I want to do is um, set my height. Now you can set your height using the navigation toolbar, which is this here. There are two types there, it's orbit and fly. In orbit, it allows you to click at the center point and then pan around when you click uh, left, right click and track. In pan, in fly, it allows you to use the ASD key, like I'm doing now, to move around the view. So um, for me, I'm going to use the ASD key and um, keep this to somewhere here because it's this sort of like a tight space. So I want to keep it a little bit high because of the way I'm going to furnish this. And um, once this is done, the next thing you want to do once you've set your view to a very good extent is to set your image size. And this is very important at the beginning of the view you are in so that you know the boundaries of your image. To do that, on that custom, you can uncheck this link key here. And then uh, I can pick any sets of elements I want here. And if I want a 2K image, and then I can adjust it. So for me, I want a vertical image. So I can quickly just do that. Something of this sort is okay. So you can see this boundaries has just formed uh, here. I can still use my DAS to move my view around a little bit to centralize the view I want. And then I'm still on two point perspective. So everything is very vertical. And uh, this looks okay for me. I can now come here and uncheck this link button. So it's always permanent. If I want it 2K and I say like I type 2.4, uh, it, it adjusts. So this is a 2K image, 24 by 2090, which is okay for me. And then for me to save this view as it is now, under the same list, you will see this arrow add scene alternate S as a shortcut. If you are creating the new scene, the first thing you can just click on this button. And immediately you do that, you can see the screen here. So I've created a camera view to work with. This is the first step for every rendering to do. Once you finish your model, you have to pick a point of view into the screen. And this is what I've just done. And I've saved that view. So if I 
click here, I go out of the camera mode. If I move my camera, let's say this way, as I click on this same list, click on this view, it adjusts back to that view. Now, because I'm not in camera mode, I won't be able to see the exact size of my image. But once I toggle on camera mode, you know, it gives me the exact size of my image. So this is it. Cool out. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. After setting up your camera, the next step is composition. So in composition, we have two phases of composition. Composition involves them putting elements in the camera and also that, so that's component composition and we have lighting composition. So you put in the elements there to make your scene beautiful and then you add the light to, you know, set it up properly. Uh, the materials you are seeing here are the materials from the Revit model. So we can easily change that when we get to materials. But for now, we are going to focus on um, important components and then also setting up the scenery and all those things. And then um, with lights before we go into materials. So let's begin. The first thing I want to do is to come under display and change this to play mode. So under display mode, we have different display mode. So change it to play mode. So in clay mode, it keeps everything, you know, in clay mode, apart from blast views that allow sunlight to come in. So that's wonderful. And it allows me to composite my scene without, you know, worried about materials and, you know, light. So the first thing I want to do is to just go in import models. In D5, if you are on the pro version, it's very simple. Tap the M key on your keyboard and load uh, the material and model components. If I click here, there is online and local. So local is for the local materials you save and online is for online models that D5 offers you. And D5 has you know, a large variety of models. So let's start with this. I'll go to furniture and uh, I'm looking for sofa. So you can click here. Uh, you need to be connected to the internet for this. See, I'm in the pro version right now and I have this particular furniture. To access it, you just click, it downloads once. As long as your pro license is active, you can use it. Um, it loads because it's the first time I'm using it. So it loads into the project. Uh, I just want to close this so we can see this. I'll click to place and I can rotate it and then you know move it around. You can scale, change materials. So two shortcuts I want to share with you. Tap T goes to the top view. And if you tap J, it goes to the wireframe mode. I think I set it in another view to just go to wireframe mode in JS. On that display, you can set it to wireframe mode. And, uh, you know, most of architects will enjoy working this way. So you can place components exactly where you want them. And uh, on that object, you can see, you can select the specific object you want. Uh, I must say it's a little bit difficult selecting object to wireframe mode. Uh, on plan, but you can easily pick them from here. So I'll just shift and move to duplicate this button. So I have another chair here. And so if I go back to this view, you can see I've been able to place chairs on this view. Now, I don't know if you noticed anything, but I noticed that my clay mode disappeared because I clicked on the sign. That's very important. Whenever I click on this place, set my clay mode. For it to be permanent, at least in the time being, I need to update it on this view. So once I update it, then it's permanent. Um. With the second aspect of our composition, which is lighting, and then 
even without doing any like this is just the default render of um, the view from D5, which is already looking very good in clean mode. So um, but let's go ahead and sort out our camera light. The first thing you want to do is to click on effects when you're dealing with cameras and then turn off auto exposure because by default, auto exposure is turned on. Um, I like to turn off the bloom just, you know, by default, put it at 0.01 or just take it off to zero. Uh, make sure my white balance is fair enough. This 6.5 is fair. Um, if I don't want too much highlights, you can also bring that out a little bit. And so this is, you know, starting point. Your exposure is actually right now at zero. Your contrast is at zero. And uh, this gives you a lot of control than just putting it on the exposure, which is going to just, you know, try and estimate how much light you need in the view. So uh, without exposure, you have to now do that yourself, which, which is cool. So you come to environment now to set up your light. We'll start with our sunlight because the daytime view we have a big glass on the left, which is our primary light. And there's a primary light that creates the most important um, light source in the view. But for this particular view, I don't want direct sunlight. So I want to go for HDRI. So this is much more like it, like at any early morning view for me, that's good. Now there are two settings here. If you click this icon on that, the light HDRI scan, there is a background light that determines how bright the the light is sorry the skylight and the background light that determines how bright or dark the background is so um this line i see here is my horizon line which is not too good because i should have i'm not supposed to see my horizon line so what i'm going to do around this is i can use vegetation to cover this line up And there's something I didn't do that's quite everything I've done since. This is really, really important. Um, when you are setting up lighting in D5, and for example, you forget to update it by clicking the same, every setting you have done for that lighting, when you go back to click on that same, it's gone. So for example, all the effects I clicked, turned off auto, everything is gone. So this is very important. So don't make this mistake. Whenever you are working, and, and maybe you decide to turn off your auto like I've done and do everything. Before you leave that view, always update and don't click, you know, move it up and down so I don't distort the view. So always remember this. I'm starting again. I've placed my background. Looks good to me. I've turned up my view. I reduce the bloom. I reduce the highlight. I might turn this thing off all back on later on. I go to environment, click on HDRI. Set it to the particular HDRI I want. Is morning sun or sunrise? I think I used early morning because I don't want any particular sunlight. And once the environment is on, I clicked on this icon, increased my, uh, reduce my background, increase the skylight, and I use the rotate icon to you know rotate this view till I have uh, a good view inside, a good bit of light inside. So this is my primary source of light in this view. And it looks, it looks, it's coming out good. Maybe not as bright as I wanted, but it's coming out okay. So before I leave this view with all these settings, it's important I save it by clicking this icon, update set. Once I do that, the lighting setting I have would be with the view. So this lighting setting I have done is looking slightly darker. Also under effects, if you want to, you can come here and increase exposure, let's say by 0 0.05. And then um, look at how it feels. So here you are now working out your way little by little. So with the primary light all set up, I can go ahead to now set up the field light. My view still feels a little bit dark here, so I can now start to put in interior lighting um, to set up. So here I want to put in about four major lights. I want to simulate a light coming in from the interior of the building at the back of this chair. I would put in two strip lights here. I want to put in one light here and uh, like um, a fireplace here. So let's just try to do that. Right light to your thing. Click on this icon here, add light. One is for point light, spotlight, strip light, rectangular light. So let me start with rectangular light. I click on it and um, 
I just want this view behind the chair to be okay. So I, I want this light behind my camera, sort of. So I just placed it here, but I can go to top view. Um, I'll turn it to, and then I can move this to maybe where I want it to act. F is for front view. Z is to zoom into the element. You can zoom out uh, of the element. And so you can see how easy to navigate and place stealth in the fight. And it's just to help me light up behind the scene. The, you know, here, this area here gets a little bit lighter. And, you know, we have more light around this region. So it's left for me to decide um, how to go with this. And I can also go back to the front view by clicking Tap and F. Alternate two to go back to the wireframe mode. You can select it. I can rotate it a little bit, let's say this way, for it to focus somewhere I want it to focus on. I can bring it down. So definitely other parts of the room will have some light spreading at all. So that's what I'm doing. Just positioning those lights so that my scene is not that dark. Uh, this light is also a white light, so it's pretty good. So I'll go ahead to add the other light, the strip light. Uh, under here, you can click on it. The shortcut is three. You click to place. You can adjust the size here and the length. So let's say here I'm setting this to, let's say 75 for the width. Um, and this one here, let's say six meters. So I've tried to place this where I can. I can say show visible light source. So it will show the light source there. So you can place element also as you get comfortable with modeling in the software, even on 3D, you can um, do that like you can see me doing now. And once I've done that, um, I can go to top, alternate tool, uh, just to be sure where I've been placing my element. Because no matter how careful you are on 3D, you might not just be placing it on the right uh, position. So this is where I want it to be. Uh, and it's supposed to start from somewhere here. I can, I think I can place it easily here. Okay. So the, the fact that um, D5 has this wireframe mode and the plan mode makes it very easy for um, elements to be placed precisely without much struggle. Shift and drag and they're able to copy seamlessly. I don't think they're on the, on the right plane. So I'm going to go to front view and um, set it to wireframe mode. And I just come here to select the two strip lights and bring it down to the level I think should be the right level, which is this level. So once again, the great advantage of having the ability to work in wireframe and in orthographic mode in D5, uh, I can set up this intensity, reduce it a little bit. Uh, I want the color or the temperature to be around, let's say, 3000, like more orange. Nature. So when placing light, you don't always need to update your scene. So it's not like it's going to change. But it's when setting the environment, you always need to update your scene. I'll click on here, click point light here. I'll place it here. He types Z, he zooms into this. T to go to the top. Alternate 2 to go to the sketch mode. And then you can place this exactly where you want. This is okay. So I'll come here and you can see the impact of the light. If I want to increase the, the effect, the radius of the light, I can do that with the attenuation radius. The intensity, the color, I think I will leave this at 2 8. You can see the effect. The intensity, I can bring it down to 10. So the, the real-time feedback you get from D5 makes working in D5 very, very beautiful. So I can decide to just put the rectangular light here, raise it away from the same but not so out because there should be some light there. I can make this a little bit blue, let's say several five, so that it gives some contrast to the scene. I'll make the band door length a little bit. You know, the more the band door length comes, the more the light looks like a soft box and uh, stuff like that. I can replicate this here by copying this, or I can even make the other one a spotlight. I can put a spotlight maybe somewhere below here, up just on that little staircase here. So there is maybe some light beneath the staircase, there is some light above it and stuff like that. So we have lights those, you know, popping in little, little areas, making the scene uh, beautiful. The lighting has been set. If I go back to my camera view, this is what I have um, on the effects. If you adjust anything, okay, 
Because the auto is turned off, I think I did this to be 0.05, just to make my exposure a little bit brighter. I don't want to make it too bright so that I have some leverage of control in editing so that I don't have so much. And there are some effect settings you might want to do here if you feel like doing it, which is also okay. So I'll click to update sign. And, and to finish up, we would add some um, accent lights to just beautify the space. So I'm going to add some stair lights. I'm going to place a fire in the fireplace. So let's quickly do that. Use the strip lights. I can place it, click to have it and place it here. If I zoom, you see that the length is longer. I can reduce the lines here. It's 1.5 maybe. I can just click and drag to reduce and this about 885 which is fair. So if, I think maybe 950 or thereabout. So I just need this kind of strip light. I can make the colors maybe 2, 8 which is okay. And uh, I'll reduce it if impact. I just need it to be you know, directly within the spell influence of the stair. Uh, the bundle length, I wanted it longer, but just to create a little bit of effect here, just focus here. That's okay. Intensity 30, I can reduce it to 20 or 10. These are just still light and uh, they, they don't necessarily need to affect the whole view. It's just within the after sales eh, in play. That's okay. So I can use Ctrl D to copy this particular light and place it here. So the light I just created. So I don't need to, sorry, wait, I can't press. I don't need to keep recreating it over and over again. So you can see, this looks good. So let me just add this fireplace here. I'll tap M, go to particle. And then, so I'll select the fire I want for download and then I'll place it there. So particles don't get affected by the clay uh, material. So I can click this. And by now you know the routine. First of all, I want to make sure it's on the plane. I'll use the arrow key to drop it as much as I can to the plane I want it. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees or you know to the point where the game to zoom. Uh let's try placing it down a little bit. It's okay. And um this is what I want. I can increase the weight here. As you can see, by clicking and dragging, as long as it's within the length I want. And you can also increase the height and it'll make it much more beautiful. You can adjust the color of the fire also, but coming out cut. I think this this is okay for me. Now, to, to make sure that this fire looks like it's creating some light, I can make this step this light down here a little bit more orange than about. Um, I can reduce the light thrust radius and the effect thrust a little bit, you know, let it feel like the, the fire is creating some view. So uh, it's important while creating renders to also design your lighting. If I tap L, all this light source get to disappear. And if I go to the camera view, you can see the effect of the final view. So we, we, we have designed our view with light. We have soft lights around, we have the daylight coming in, we have the spotlight, we have the ceiling lights. We have uh, the spotlight here and, uh, you know, everything does beautify the space with lighting. And with this, we can now go into material application. Very nice. Very, very nice. So the first thing to note in material application is that you need to turn off the clean mode. So you come to camera or display, set it back to um, the normal view mode and then update your thing because now we are done with the clay mode. So you update your sign. Uh, that's the first step towards doing that. The components I already have here have materials. All the elements are imported from D5. So I'm just going to focus on the elements that are modeled from the other software. Where it? I'll tap M. I'll go to material and then I'll start searching. Let's say white. Because I want my walls to be white wall paint. So yes, this is the white wall paint. So I'll click on it and then I'll use it to apply it to the walls. And um, I think there is also a wall here outside that has the same material. I'll have to confirm. So I've applied to the wall. I think I also need to apply it to the ceiling. And uh, maybe this one here, I might use marble. So it's as simple as that. I'll just click and drop. 
This materials are very high quality and they can allow you to work quickly. If I need to adjust them, I'm going to do that later. Let me see white marble. Let me just see if I have something like that. So this is like a white marble. I can apply this here. Um, this is a glass material from David, but it's been recognized as glass here. So that's cool. Um, this particular stairs finishes wood. So um, I can search for wood here, like a wooden finish, just by typing wood. So it, it, it's just that easy. Um, D5 makes life very easy. Um, and it's, this, this looks cool already. It, it might give me everything on that metal, so I might just find something nice. And uh, let me see. apply it here. This looks good. Um, this is also metal here. So this brushed aluminum steel and steel. This is like silver. Let me see if I can apply this here to these elements here. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. I can also apply something else. I think I have something my model like that here. Good. So um, this is just how easy you can apply materials in D5. Even before you become an expert, in, a, ma, a material application in D5. D5 has, so this is the black metal here, and I, I can use it for the spring here. So D5 has very good, high quality materials you can use, and your views and renders will start coming out amazing. Now, for me to, uh, to adjust an existing material, I'll need to use the pick button here. If I click on it, uh, it, uh, it comes like a picker, and I click on the material. So everything about the material comes out here. And it's with this, maybe if I reduce the transparency a little bit, just maybe 70%, the glass is being seen better. And the same thing here. So I might just want to touch up the glass a little bit, just maybe I'll make the transparency 100%, just a little bit, maybe 88%, 90%, so that the feel of the glass itself, uh, you know, can come through. So that's good. Uh, the reflectivity of the glass also can also be toyed with, depends on how much you want that to be done. So these are just little, little tricks and tips, and you can see your, your view coming out amazingly. So I've not applied float house. Let's go ahead to do that. I'll type M and uh, maybe ceramic tiles. I can just pick any one I want if I've downloaded them before. Most of these components I've downloaded them before and applied. And you can even see the scale and the matching is, is already almost perfect. And then I can select this, adjust the specular, how reflective it is. Uh, if I want to increase the roughness so that it's not too glossy. Um, yeah, I, I think the specular was um, 0 0.3 or something, just a while ago. So if I leave it at 0 0.2, that's fair. Um, so if I turn on the pipe planar UV mapping, the, it, it changes the way the image stays on the floor into um, a 3D mode. And then I can also use this to stretch. Let me click on this. Um, if I want to have kind of a square tile or maybe rectangular place tile, I can use this adjustment. You can see that on the floor, how it's adjusting. D5 makes life so, so easy with, uh, where, especially when you're in pro mode and you have all these things at your fingertips. And so the quality of the, the model in D5 is already top notch, as top notch as they come, as realistic as they come. So all you need to do is just to apply your other materials, not worry about D5 components because D5 components are extremely uh, top notch quality. So you don't need to worry about that. So I've finished applying my materials. If I'm missing anything, fine, but I think I need to go outside and just apply some materials to elements here. Yeah? I hope this particular first material I'm applying is just only for this one. So, so I'm just I'm just tweaking it a little bit. Then out materials changes. Fine. So I just did that on the outside uh, with some dark elements there. And uh, I've been able to apply all my materials. If I go to my view, this is what I'm going to be seeing. And um, everything is good to go.
if I wanted to adjust any material from the components I had also, this is possible by using the I button as a shortcut to select it and maybe tweak one or two things here. Maybe if I wanted this to be a little bit brighter, you see the chairs get brighter and the two of them get brighter at the same time. So, you know, that's, that's one way to do that. And, um, I can also adjust the color and the feel of the chair. This, this has been done. This looks good to me. This is my camera view. Go through everything for the final time. My um, HDRI setting, the effect setting. So at this point, if you want to turn on maybe your bloom a little bit, if you want to adjust your exposure a little bit, if you want to add to your contrast a little bit, you can all do that now. So I might not want to do all this test uh, because the view is looking good. We have other effects here, like lens play. If you have sunlight coming into a space from a tiny space, we have the vignette option, you know, to darken the edges. Um, so you don't need to start stressing yourself in, uh, in other softwares to do that. Or at least you have a head start uh, with those things. We are good to go. We have finished our material. And the next setting is friendly. And D5 is as easy as clicking the render button. So no too much setting, no going back and forth. Everything we've been doing on the time is set. So I'll just click to update my scene because you notice I moved around here a little bit and um, I'm good to go. I might, I'm not really pleased here, but it's okay. I can go back to my HDRI, click on this icon. Wow, maybe religious. I'm just thinking of reducing my background a little bit so that it's not all together white. So uh, this is 0 0.06, 0 0.07. Uh, okay, so that's fair. And then I'll go ahead to render this amazing view and then we can go ahead to do any post if you want. Now, when rendering, you have the option to export channels. So if you click on channels, and then you can set what and what you need here and then it sets the format for your rendering for the uh, export maybe if you want it as png and then click render there's also a batch render for you to click more but for me i'm just going to click render it's going to ask me where to save d5 is very fast with rendering depends on the capacity of your desktop laptop and also the size of your scene as you can see, it's rendering this view in uh, less than a minute. So it's our uh, 51 seconds, 41 seconds there about. And it's done. So this is how we're able to create this view. And uh, from one view, you can decide to create another view. So let me say I just want a close up shot here. Um, this is good. And then I'll click Add Sale here or Alternate S. It acts on the last thing for me. You can see that I have a, a new view here. I want to check something. I'll put this in the, in, the, in the render queue by clicking this, and then I'll come to this other view. I just want to adjust it a little, nothing serious. And then also put this in the render queue. So when I click here, I want to say, okay, this is good. So you can export two images of different sizes, and then I'll add all these two render queues. So I have four renders and four cameras I've already added to my render queue and then uh, different different sizes so that's wonderful so you can have different different sizes and once you select all of them you need to set a location um, for where they are going to be saved to which I've done like this and I'll select the folder and um, it, you can ask you to close D5 after rendering maybe you want to go to bed and stuff like that yeah so we are done with the rendering this is uh some shots from the rendering. You can see how quality they are. You can see the Christmas icons, the clothes, Christmas tree, everything. This is the exact rendering from D5. You can see I saw the Christmas tree there, the light, the clothes, the angle of the view, um, everything. So basically, this, these are the views. These are close-up shots showing the fire, the tiles, the material, everything on how uh, very beautiful and realistic they are. This, this nature from D5 Earth are just showing the quality of realism. Yeah. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned one or two things. You can check out my other video on exterior rendering using D5. I also started from scratch to finish in that video. 
and um, also subsequent videos you can check out my channel would we'll explore how to go about uh, creating other animations from this video so thanks for watching and um, i'll catch you in subsequent videos thanks